Would you like to hear a little story? <laughs> thinking about auditioning for a role in a musical. <gasps> so I'm just, you know, I'm trying to <clears throat> warm up. I'm trying to dust out the vocal cobwebs, as they say. <gasps> oh, wonderful, darling, wonderful. Ooh, I'll help you choose the perfect audition song, eh? No, 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 that's not necessary. <laughs> oh, darling, of course it is. No, let's see, move over, scooch. Yes, darling, scooch, scooch. Now, what are we doing? What have we got here? I was just about to go through some songs. Good, darling, good. Let's sing through a few. Let's sing through a few. Here we go. Okay. Come on, babe, we're gonna paint the town. And all the jazz. No. No. Uh, no. Okay. No. no. Visualize, listen, how about this? Something familiar, something peculiar. Now, I don't think that was fun. Well, how about this one? Climb every mountain. Uh, oh, well, it's a classic, darling. It's a classic. Oh, darling, what about this one? Really? You can really groove, darling. Friday night and the lights are low. Working up a place to go. ba da ba do. Can't see the words when they play the right music. Getting in the swing, you've come to look for a king. Oh, no, no, that's not. That's very dramatic, darling. Uh, uh, no. it's Abba, darling. I don't think Abba's the right. Swede's version of rock music. Very powerful, darling. Don't cry for me, Argentina. The truth is, I never left you. Damn it. All through my wild days, my mad existence, kept my promise. Don't keep your distance. No. Two? How are things in Glockamora, darling? Darn if I know. I can hear the bells. Can you? Actually, probably someone should get their ears checked. If you're hearing bells, get your ears checked. It could be tinnitus. All right, darling, this one is very powerful, very emotional. If you need to weep, I'll allow it. I dream the dream in time gone by. When hope was high and life worth living. <laughs> too emotional, too much blubbering, darling. Moving on. I love Paris. Yeah, it's okay. I want to be a producer. Yes, actually. If ever I would leave you. <laughs> Derek. Yes, if ever. <laughs> I'm never leaving you. So that's a, <laughs> it's moot. If I ruled the world. Oh, darling. Yes. Well, you know, take the if out. If I were a bell. Again with the bells, darling. What is it with the bells? I don't know. It might as well be spring. Yes. It's almost 60 degrees today. Might as well be spring. The grand night for singing. <laughs> it's not night time. Darling, it truly is. De lovely. Well. I never bother with people I hate. It's true. Leaning on a lamp post. Oh, this is a classic day. No, oh, all right. It's a tough crowd. Losing my mind. Look to the rainbow. Make believe. Make someone happy. It's overrated. Darling, darling, we must. Midnight, not a sound from the pavement. Yeah, not this one. It's that old devil moon. On a cold day, you can see forever. 
Grey skies are gonna clear up. Put on a happy face. Uh -uh. Moving on. The rain is being stays mainly in the play. New 525,600 minutes. Uh -uh. Personal. An enchanted evening. Someone else's story. Somebody loves me. Someone like you. Song on the sand. La da da da. Take my hand. I'm a stranger in paradise. No, no, no. Lost in a wonderland. A stranger in paradise. Okay. Sorry with a friend on the top. Tell me on the Sunday, darling. There's no business like show business, no. They live in you. Well, that's an unfortunate title. You could take that title several different ways. Oh, well, so oh, witty. Why, God, why? From Miss Saigon, no? Hmm. Who can I turn to? Damn it. What kind of fool am I? Hmm. I don't know, darling. What kind of fool are you? What I did for love. Kiss today, goodbye. What a fine. Wishing you the sun the whole year again. Knowing we must say goodbye. <laughs> no? Okay. Well, darling, what is this rule? Well, actually, it's for a villain. <gasps> oh, a villain? Really, darling? Ooh. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Really, darling? Yeah. No, it's just that uh, I'm not sure, darling, about your innate ability to play a villain. Well, I'd still really like to try. Well, all right, darling. Then how about this one? Uh, actually, huh. This might work. Yes, yes, darling, let's sing it. All right. Hi, everyone, I'm Andy. Welcome to season seven of Furniture Fables. Ah, a new year, fresh ideas, new beginnings, innovative projects, and a healthy dose of preoccupation. I'm sorry, what was I saying? Sometimes the best way to get moving in a certain direction when one has a lot on their mind in another is with a project where the choices are as plain as a paint drop on the nose of a furniture fabler's face or a sticker collection adorably displayed upon the front of a no longer needed dresser. Ah, here is my sticker book now, and our first Fables friend of 24. This is a little four-drawer chest I scooped for free. Yes, I know. Can you believe I got this for free? Uh, yeah, it's in kind of rough shape. Its mid-century faux wood laminate finish was practically peeling off in certain spots, and it was covered in dings and scratches. But that, of course, was not the only thing it was covered in. It had quite the respectable scribble in the bottom of one drawer, and it was covered in stickers. The person I picked it up from explained to me that this had been their dresser since they were a kid, and so I, of course, promised to take extra good care of it for them. It was made by a California furniture maker that has since gone out of business, and while not a high-end piece of furniture, it did have dovetail drawers and a lovely mid-century modern design with its contrasting outset lower drawer and subtle bowtie-esque base detail. And then there were its pulls, 
which actually were quite the hot-button issue within the Klein household, eliciting contrasting opinions depending on whom you asked about them. And so, hoping that some good hard work in the workshop could take my mind off of current worries and preoccupations, I began. I started by taking out all four drawers and removing those controversial pulls. They had a good amount of patina, or crud in this case, but I was pretty sure I could clean them up and reuse them. What's your first impression? Cool mid-century design or not so much? One kid said, wow, those are really cool. John said, you're going to be replacing those, aren't you? <laughs> okay, putting a pin in that. As part of my plan to keep things nice and simple for myself, I decided to use these simple green cloths to help me degrease and clean this little guy. These are great. They are nice and big and strong, and they will cut through any grease or oily residue on the dresser's surface, which is, of course, exactly what we want to do. I used them on the inside as well, but first I vacuumed up all of the dust that I could see and the dust that I couldn't see, and then I began working on the drawer fronts. I used my simple green cloths to moisten the stickers, and then I used my painter's tool to scrape those stickers off. I could also have used some Goo Gone or some other product to help loosen them, but I find that this works really well. If I can just get them damp with water or some kind of basic cleaning fluid, they will usually scrape off pretty easily. I also found what looked like maybe wax and I scraped that off as well. This kind of thing will very quickly gunk up your sandpaper. And so the more you can remove, all the better. Okay, am I the only one? I always feel a little bit guilty about removing Winnie the Pooh stickers and, and pink kitties. <laughs> oh dear. And Tigger. There's Tigger. Oh, and there's Taz. There's the Tasmanian devil. Oh, sigh. As annoying as these things are to us adults, they mean a lot to us when we're kids, and they're like a little pictorial representation of someone's childhood and how it progressed from Pink Kitty Cats to High School Musical. All right, feeling like I had this little dude as clean as I can get him, I started sanding the drawer fronts. And yes, in December, someone, okay, me, did spill a little red paint, and it did splatter onto my sander. Oh, there's always some holiday casualties, you know. So the dresser's faux wood finish was essentially like a big sticker here on the drawers and needed to be completely removed so that I could create a smooth, fresh finish. Here you can see how that faux finish was probably hoping to look like walnut and how the actual timbers used underneath were not anything to get too excited about. This is definitely not finished quality wood, which makes these little mid-century pieces such great candidates for painting. Sometimes you might luck out and find a wood texture worth showcasing, but oftentimes not. And so here my goal was to get these drawer fronts and the bottoms as well, as smooth and cleaned up as possible so they would be ready for the paint I was planning on using. With the drawer front sanded, I wanted to make sure that their wood grain was not going to be visible under any paint so that it would match up with the laminate top and sides. We're going for a very sleek, modern look here. So I actually sanded against the wood grain and then I carefully felt, without looking at it, using my sense of touch to tell me if the drawer fronts were actually smooth. I also cleaned up the sides where there was a brown glaze or stain over those dovetail details. Okay, so here is a little trick. 
you can do if you're not totally sure whether or not a wood grain is going to be visible under paint. I grabbed some basic plain chalk paint and I just did a little test spot. I did two coats and then let that dry. And here I'm going to actually paint over a ding just to show how a flat single-toned paint really highlights imperfections that are much harder to spot in the natural wood. That is why it is so good to fill these little guys. Okay, while those test spots dried, I went ahead and I scuff sanded the top of the dresser. Here you can see I found something sticky I had missed. And then I smoothed out that outset lower bar. It definitely was suffering from chewed syndrome, as I call it, being kind of chipped on either side, the top and the bottom. But I felt that I was able to smooth it out just with some basic sanding, which was nice that I didn't have to kind of fill and build it back up. Then I did the same thing with that base bar and the top bar as well, smoothing out all of their little imperfections. As I sanded the laminate sides, I found little areas where the top coating was kind of crackling and needed to be sanded out a little bit more. I find that this is kind of common with laminate in rough shape. And thankfully, usually it doesn't require any further fix or smooth over. But again, you always just want to use your sense of touch to tell you. Thankfully, the bottom of the piece was in pretty good shape. Okay, let's check out our samples. Of course that divot was as clear as day, but this test patch over here was looking pretty good. So I was pretty confident we were in good shape. No need to do any kind of all over smooth coat for these drawer fronts. I sanded off the test patches and this is why I recommend using just a very simple chalk paint. No acrylic, no enamel, no all in one because that will be much harder to sand off. Whereas this chalk paint sands off lickety split. Okay, so I am getting ready to fill now. Now that I've sanded and everything is feeling really pretty smooth, but I've just got a few of these little imperfections that I wanna fill. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the Bondo, but because I've got one, two, three, four drawers, and I've got a few spots here on the body of the dresser. There's a couple spots here on this bar. There's a couple of spots up there, maybe one or two here down on the bottom uh, finishing bar. I kind of plot it out because of course, once I mix up that Bondo, it's gonna wanna set up uh, really rather quickly. And this is a lot of ground to cover. So before I do that, I'm gonna, gonna do a little choreography, a little planning out. Yes, anytime I've got lots of little tiny repairs to do, I kind of plan my moves because it's such a bummer to mix up that filler and then miss spots. I let all of that filler dry and then sanded it back nice and smooth. Finally, time to prime. Whenever working with laminate, I either use a primer specifically made for more slippery surfaces, or I just use the Big Daddy. This is that shellac-based primer I use a lot. It's tried and true, a favorite of many, many painters and furniture flippers. It will block any bleed through or odors, of which there were none, thankfully, on this little guy. And it will do a great job in both adhering to this surface or just about any other surface and it will give our paint something good to it adhere to as well. Some paints will really struggle to grab a hold of laminate so this primer is a great insurance policy.
Okay, so I had planned on spraying my paint on this little dresser, but then I remembered I had this kind of fancy pants roller from Fusion Mineral Paint that I had been wanting to try out, so I decided to use it instead. This is a micro felt roller by Stallmeister, and it is washable and reusable. That micro felt is supposed to help you get a really smooth, even finish, which is of course what we're going for here, so I'm excited to give it a try. I'm also excited to try a new to me fusion color. This is Cambridge, which Fusion describes as a deep and elegantly weathered blue. This shade boasts gray, but leads with blue, leaving you with a confident and classic shade. Well, confidence sounds pretty good to me right now. Okay, friends, it's audition day. Um, getting ready here, getting ready to leave in a few minutes. I'm actually just hit myself in the face. Talent. Um, I'm going to put on my hot pink blazer. I don't know if it says villain exactly, but it it just it's you know it's a it's a color you remember. That's good, and uh, it just makes me feel good. It makes me feel strong and confident. Color psychology. Ultimately, it's just whether or not I can like sing and act kind of well. <laughs> Which I guess is fair. Um, okay, so this is so nerve wracking. Oh my goodness. But it's like a job interview, except you're being judged artistically, you know, so it's no big deal. <laughs> Wish me break a leg. I did it. Where are you? I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. I did the dang thing, friend. Ooh. I did it. Oh my goodness, that feels so good to have that done. My two big goals were don't flub the words and stick the high note. <laughs> it's like sticking the, sort of like sticking the landing or something in gymnastics. Didn't screw up the words, didn't, didn't crack or do something weird on the high note. Yay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so now I just wait. I just wait to hear if they would like to see me for a callback. That's it. I just get it. Now I just gotta wait. Oh, I'm so glad I'm done with that. I'm so glad I'm done with that. Okay, while I am waiting, why don't we check out Cambridge a little closer? Here for comparison, you can see it between Homestead Blue, which definitely has more green in it, and that's Willowbank to the right. It's a brighter blue. All right, I gave the paint a good shake and a stir, and then I poured it into the pan and began rolling. You always want to err on the side of less paint. You really want that color to build up layer by layer. And you really also want to resist the urge to push on a roller, which is hard for me. I'm not used to using a roller. <laughs> and I, I definitely want to push down on it. Try as much as you can to let the roller do the work for you. After I got a layer of paint down, I came across again on each surface with some finishing rolls with the lightest touch possible to help even everything out. Rolling is a great time saver and a great way to get a smooth finish if you don't have a spray gun. But I will say that having a high quality roller seems to be making a big difference. Sometimes I end up with an orange peel kind of texture after rolling, but as long as I didn't overload this Stallmeister, it did a fabulous job laying the paint down without that texture.
Okay, remember those interesting pulls? Well, in order to give them a fair shake, I took them inside and I gave them a vinegar and hot water bath. Hmm. Something about them reminds me of bugs or spiders or aliens. You know that scene where the face sucker aliens suddenly press up against the glass container in the lab? <laughs> These look like they're gonna jump out of the water bath to me. <laughs> You'll be relieved to know that they did stay put. While those soaked, I took an artist brush and I hit all of the little detail spots that the roller couldn't reach. You can see from my splotches there that I am not used to using a roller. And then I brought the bug pulls outside and I gave them a good scrubbing with a brush and some steel wool. Hey, cleaning up pretty well. All that gunk is coming off nicely. And here's some more good news. So yesterday I went to the audition uh, and then I had to take my, one of my daughters to her volleyball tournament. And late that night when I got home, I checked my email and lo and behold, I got called back. So the callback is today. Uh, and I was actually called back for two roles. The one that I was interested in and also another role i would be thrilled to do either of them so i have a couple of songs that i need to learn in a couple of hours and uh i need to look over the sides those are the the scenes the, that uh they want you to be ready to read in character uh my kid has another volleyball thing today so i'm a little bit under the gun we got a kind of a time crunch thing going here but i'm excited probably we'll do some dance as well today at the callback. That'll be fun. Okay, I'll let you know how it goes. <sighs> I'm done. I'm done. I did the callback. You know, it went, I think, about as well as it could go. Why am I whispering? Callbacks are hard, auditions are hard, right? You always look back, you go, oh, I should have done that like this, or why didn't I cross here and say it like this or whatever. But I made some choices. I made some strong choices, which I always appreciate as somebody who's trying to cast shows. So I think they're gonna see some more people like in a few days. My guess is that people will hear one way or another on Friday. So I hope it works out. I really, really do. I think I still would prefer to do the role that I was, you know, originally interested in. It would be amazing to do the other role as well. I'd be thrilled. But it would be really fun to get to do something more evil on stage. Who knows? I might not get anything. So <sighs> it's a good thing I've got lots of work cut out for me. <laughs> Keep me occupied. It's hard. It's hard to wait for that kind of news. Yes, lots of work still to do. So while I waited, I decided to brighten up these drawers with some cool paper. I found this beautiful paisley over on Amazon. It actually also comes in a blue version, but I kind of liked how the green in this one really played against Cambridge. So pretty. And you know, I like a thick, strong wallpaper, and this is one. It, it's super robust. Okay, time to dress up those pulls. I grabbed this pure gold spray from Rust-Oleum and I gave all of the pulls two good coats. After they dried, I took one over and I decided I didn't really love it against the Cambridge. It kind of pulled green, sort of. So I decided it would be fun to do a little comparison of a few other colors I had on hand that I hadn't used yet. This first one is Antique Gold by Ace. Then we have Bright Coat Metallic Finish by Rust-Oleum. And then this Hammered Copper by Rust-Oleum. I gave my three sample pulls two coats of each, and then I compared them along with the Pure Gold pull as well. Wow, 
this hammered copper is kind of fun. It's obviously very warm, the warmest of these four colors, and it does create this kind of hammered, dappled texture. The next warm was the Antique Gold by Ace. Very nice dark gold with some copper undertones. Then we have the Pure Gold, which again looks kind of green next to these other colors. And then there is this metallic finish, which is a warm gold with a slightly higher sheen. I decided it was between the antique gold and the metallic. I really liked the warmer colors with the paint, but I thought the metallic was probably better with the paint and the liner paper. And I think the bright fresh gold will hopefully take the buggy alien look out of the design for me. Okay. Do you remember our little sticker book? Scuffed, scarred, dinged and dented. With some questionable pulls, but unquestionable design lines. Well, here he is, now. Wow, what a great way to kick off a new year. No longer a sticky and scuffed mess, our little New Year's dude is ready for another generation's jeans. With his smooth as silk finish, sparkling drawers, and refreshed pulls, I think our mini mid-century is ready for all kinds of new possibilities. Speaking of new possibilities. Okay. I just got to look. in shock and absolutely overjoyed. I, I can't believe it. I'm so excited. I am so excited. <laughs> the cast list has not been posted yet, so I cannot share any details, but as soon as it is, I absolutely will. And if you'd like, I would love to share with you a little bit about this theatrical journey as it unfolds. So back to our newly unstuck friend, what did it cost to do this little simple makeover? I spent about $35 on primer and paint and spray paint, so all in 35 bucks. Another 15 on that wallpaper for the drawer liners. And then I'll throw in another $5 for sanding pads, cleaning cloths, etc. Bringing my total out of pocket cost to $55. What might I list it for? Well, I was going to keep it under 300, but with its pretty design and its original pulls that no longer to me look like something trying to murder me. I don't know, I think it looks pretty snappy. I think I will go ahead and list it at $325 and we'll 
see how it goes. So what do you think about our simple and unstuck friend? Did you like the Cambridge? I am a fan of a deep blue, I gotta say. I really liked it. I think it's a handsome color. And how about those pulls? Did that fresh gold paint transform them for you into something aesthetically pleasing or are they still scary looking. I think they look good. They look like little bows to me now and the little shallow triangle base that kind of evokes a, a, a bow tie and then the bow, they look like bows. There's something, there's just something kind of, it, I, I think it works. I think it works now. I'm pretty sure. I, I'm pretty sure it works. I don't think they look like aliens anymore or spiders. I think. I'm 98% sure. Let me know what you think. I could take them off. I need your advice. Please tell me. Let me know what you think and make sure to like and subscribe because it's gonna be a fun year. Friends, I've decided. I've just, I've decided I'm proclaiming it. I think we should just get together on the reg and just have a blast together. That's what I think we should do. I hope you're in. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me, my friends. I will see you next time for more furniture and other fables.